Welcome back to the Fit Dad Club podcast. My name is Travis Jones. I'm here with Jason Barrett. Jason, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm on the up and up, recovering from uh, COVID. So getting getting there, which has been good. Had a week of my daughter having COVID and then my wife having it, being pregnant. So she had it quite bad as well. Big big coughing and shivers and chills and all of those fun things. And then no one's there to feel sorry for me having it because everyone else is unwell and I have the I have it the best. So um, doing good, man, doing good. Recording this on my, my 31st birthday. So if you're listening to this, you, uh, you are contractually obligated to drop a happy birthday in the comments, even though it's a few days late. Um, but overall, doing better than I was yesterday. And I know I said this, I think, the last week on the podcast about my lower back, but um, still doing better than I was then. So, hey, I'm on the upward trajectory. It's all going well. Awesome. How about you, bro? You, you got a, um, have you guys got a, what is it, a, a half marathon half. this weekend? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fly to Victoria for the Great Ocean Road half with my wife and her cousins this uh, weekend. So they've been training for that. So I am the Sherpa this weekend. Mm -hmm. So I'll just run with a vest and um, pace them and give them gels and water and all the rest of it to make sure they hit their goal time. So it's fun. But then I woke up yesterday with sciatica. So um, I don't really, I don't really ever get sciatica. So it's, it's a hurting to walk at the moment, to be honest. Um, so I did like a, a 40 minute run with them yesterday as they're one of the, they got one more run tomorrow, just as an easy run. And mate, that was a interesting run with sciatica, but you know, I feel like life throws me these, um, lessons or not lessons. I think it's just a challenge. It's like, you know what? The average man would just not do it. But travel, like, so like, try my, and find a way. <laughs> exactly. I feel like uh, um, these challenges happen just to to make things a little bit harder. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, five twenty pace will be easy for you. Ah, will a five twenty pace be easy for you with sciatica? We'll see. Um, so I kept uh, looking. I was, I was looking up solutions for my lower back pain and, and some of the stuff I was dealing with. I, for me, it was the same thing. I found because of my flare up where I was not, like basically bedridden for a week ish, um, I found this program that was really, really helpful and, and that I'm following along with now. Um, a lot of people talked about sciatica. I always got confused between sciatica and scoliosis. And um, mm. I was like, what do you just, you just get sciatica? It's just your spine curves? So I'm like, oh, wait, no, that's scoliosis. It's similar, similar, but different. Um, but yeah, you see it as, the, as that. I'm very grateful for the fact that if I didn't have that, that flare up, I wouldn't have found this this um, mm. program and this protocol to uh, to work through, um, which will be really, really good. I'll keep everyone updated because I know a lot of dads that talk to us struggle with back pain and struggle with um, issues with their hips and lower back and stuff. But I think the biggest thing is actually doing the shit you need to do to fix it, which is the problem. But um, yeah, hopefully hopefully you can ease up on it, do a few, uh, a few stretches and, and get your nerves flossed and, and good to go. Well, that's the problem, right? Like I started a mobility routine. I've been doing about 25 minutes a day um, for the last, oh, today was day three. And I did it the first day. And then like five hours later is when it started to happen. I was like, clearly mobility is the wrong thing for me. I need to say well, tight and immobile. It's, um, oh, that, oh, that's just it, right? I mean, and then you go down the whole rabbit hole of, you know, the reason why you're tight and immobile is to protect mm. your little things. But the, yeah. um, the interesting part is, uh, and I found this with some of the mobility days because the, the, what I'm doing, there's one day that's mobility and one day that's like strengthening and, and um, a, like a lot of the stuff, the strengthening stuff is also mobility, right? It's like doing stuff to, you know, doing um, uh, tibialis raises, which will also help you with your ankle flexibility because you're actively trying to pull. Because there's a difference between, and we've talked about, we probably haven't talked about this, but like passive stretching where you're just like bend over and touch your toes and then like actively using your muscles to pull yourself into stretched positions, um, the active stretching portion of it. So, um, but when it's come to the mobility days, when I was doing one of those with my flare up, it was like an outer hip, like external uh, internal rotation drop set where you're trying to pull, like go into internal rotation, try and pull your foot up. And I, I did that and I I was like the next day my hip was fucked and i was like that was my mobility day and it was the most like pushing of it um so it's definitely one of those things i found where you've got to you've, you've got to ease in and you've got to especially with some of those little sort of issues you got to know your your limits and, and back off a little bit but mobility can definitely be one of those things you push it a bit too hard and fuck bang ouch yeah i just have to sort of reach the david goggin stage where he does three hours of stretching a day maybe i'm not sure um, but uh, <laughs> we will see today, mate, today we are going through three different topics. It's, uh, you know, you don't lack motivation. You lack discipline. We're going to go through, do you actually have to track your nutrition? And 
your lack of your your lack of belief in yourself is actually what's holding you back. So I think we might make some micro topics over the next couple of weeks um, where we cover multiple different little topics um, inside the podcast as we transition um, through it. So you can try and get these bite sized pieces of information that you can implement or listen to a third of the podcast and then sort of you know listen to the rest later throughout the week. Um, but we're going to kick off today with you don't lack motivation, you lack discipline. I think. A big thing that a lot of people say to us um, before they start or even when the first, you know, 30 days or 60 days, I just, I just lack motivation um, or I don't have the motivation to follow the nutrition or I don't have the motivation to get out of bed or I don't have the motivation to change my life. And what were they doing is like they're, they're blaming motivation for the reason why they can't change. And I think this is something because we always want to blame something and motivation is um, air, right? So if we can blame something that we can't exactly pinpoint, it's like this word that we can't physically see because if we blame pizza, that's a thing, right? Uh, but because we, <laughs> we blame motivation, like what is motivation? Um, and the reality is it's the easiest thing to blame. I'm just motivated. I wasn't born motivated. Oh, yeah, look at those people. They're all motivated. That's why they get results. Um, and then we sort of say this is the difference between us and them. I think that is one of the biggest problems. Mm. Like the way I like to think about it for guys, it's you, you're not motivated. Most of you aren't motivated to go to work every day. Like you're not waking up and you're like, oh, I can't wait to go into the office or I can't wait to get on site. Like you're not actually motivated to do it. So why the fuck do you do it? Right? Mm. You say so you can. And, and this is the, this is, one of the key things when it comes to a transformation and getting rid of that negative mindset and that self-belief issue, which we'll talk about a bit later, is actually having a reference point for times when you've done shit that you haven't wanted to do. So it's like, so you're breaking through the idea that I need to be motivated. Because this is the problem. People think I need to be motivated to do these things. I need to want to work out. I need to want to go for a run. I need to easily want to eat healthy it's like no you're just assuming that the process is going to be easy it's not it's going to be fucking difficult to choose the chicken and salad when you're used to ordering a pizza like that's going to be challenging you're not going to feel motivated to want to eat a chicken and salad initially you're going to be motivated to want to eat a pizza because it's convenient and all these other things but you do a bunch of other shit that you're not motivated to do you're not motivated to do the dishes but you probably do them anyway if not you probably should right just get one some brownie points with your wife i've taught a couple guys how to cook dishes and how to how to cook a bit better and they've been started to earn real good brownie points with their wives so just saying out there um if you want to if you want to you know anniversaries birthdays coming up i'll teach you how to cook um <coughs> but you are not motivated to go to work you do it because you have to you do it because it's what you do it's routine and you're disciplined to do it because you know if you don't you're not going to make money you're going to get fired and then you're going to be out on the bones of your ass because there's consequences to your actions so you need to be aware of the fact that there are consequences to you not going to the gym there are consequences to you eating the pizza and eating the cookies it's not meant to be an easy process and motivation is, um, Zig Ziglar used to say, motivation is like bathing. We recommend it daily. It is a temporary thing it, that wears off. It's not something that you just are motivated to go and do things. It's that you create such a routine and you make the process so easy for yourself, as easy as possible, so that it becomes easier to do than not to do. And that's a, that's a hard balance to get right you've got to find that point where um you know and some of the key things that we talk about for this one is pre-making decisions and um, i've told this for guys especially when it comes to like if you're going out for dinners or lunches or whatever you pre-make the decision you look at the the menu ahead of time and then you go okay even if it's the day before i'm going to track pre-track what i think i'm going to have i went through this whole process with one of my guys last weekend he was like oh i'm going to go this i think i might get this like uh chicken salad like nourish bowl or whatever this is the, the beauty of pre-tracking. I actually went into it. I looked at the picture. We entered the greens. It was like beans and avocado and some kind of mayo and black rice and, and you know chicken tenders on top and whatever. It ended up being about like 1,200 calories because of just like all of the random shit that was in it. Um, and so I was like, all right, well, let's look. There's a peri-peri chicken wrap. Peri-peri chicken wrap with a small serve of chips ended up being like 700 calories. I was like, bro, let's just fucking go for this um, and pre-track it. Uh, be aware of what we're going to be having. Fit it in with the context of our day. And we succeeded and we won. He didn't need to be motivated. He just needed to be disciplined enough to look ahead and go, cool, this is what I'm going to pick. Now I don't need to fucking look at the menu. I don't need to be aware of what option is going to be on there because I already know I'm going to go in. I'm not going to look at the menu. I'm going to go peri-peri chicken wrap, please. And that's it. 
And then it's like the rest of his guys, his mates went out drinking. He's like, oh, I'm doing dry May. I'm not going to be drinking for the rest of May because that's a problem for me. Um, so he didn't drink. They went out till 4 a.m. He went home, had a great night's sleep, went for a run the next morning and did a leg session in the afternoon. Fucking great results. That was a result of discipline. He wasn't motivated. He felt motivated afterwards. Motivation is feeling you get after you do something good. But if you want that feeling, you first got to be disciplined. You first got to look ahead and go, what can I do with what I've got? Can I, do I, I need to have a clear enough picture of why am I fucking doing this, right? I go to work because I don't want to end up on the bones of my ass and, and living out of a car. I want my family to, to have food on the table. It's a big motivator. Um, maybe just 10% less food for you. That's all you need to do. Um, and, that's, and, and then you control your portion size. But you've got to look ahead. You've got to plan ahead um, and make it as easy as possible for yourself. Remove those distractions. Remove those temptations because now's not the time to be fucking testing your willpower. Oh, I've got to have everything in the house and then resist it. And I was like, no, you fucking don't. Make it easy for yourself and streamline because you have not built up that discipline and that consistency yet. Yeah, I agree, man. I think there's, a, there's, as we all know, and if we don't know, there's a thing called decision fatigue and you only have a, a finite amount of decisions you really can make on a daily basis before you start to make really shitty based decisions. It's like why the Elon, like Mark Zuckerberg, um, uh, will wear the same clothes over and over again. Um, or so does Steve Jobs, you know, they like, I make one decision. This is what my outfit is. And this is what I wear from now on. Um, cause they know they make so many decisions in a day. They don't want to waste, um, the decision making time on trivial things. And to be honest, food is trivial. Okay, we have to eat it just like clothes. We have to wear them. I would say most people do have to wear them. Um, it's like you don't make a decision. Should I brush my teeth today? Like mm. you just brush your teeth because you have to brush your teeth. Because if not, like, you know, your teeth aren't going to be good. If you don't wear clothes, you'll probably be fired um, unless you weren't working in a strip joint or something. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like with this, the, the if you pre-make the decisions ahead of time, you're like, this is my lunches for the week. This is what I eat for breakfast. This is my hot breakfast. This is my cold breakfast. Monday nights are, you know, spag bowl and Tuesday nights are naked burritos and Wednesday nights are at-home pizzas or in your burgers or whatever it is that fits your macros and your calories that you've planned out on a Sunday and you've done shopping once so you don't have to go to the shops every single day after work and decide what you have to eat. It's these pre-made decisions. Now, all you have to do is you have to wake up and follow the plan because you don't have to be motivated to go, well, what am I going to eat tonight and be motivated to choose the right thing. You've already decided. So all you need to do is then have the discipline to keep taking the next step forward. So there's a big difference between you're standing at two roads and one's, oh, I've got to choose, you know, like Burger King, I don't know, KFC or whatever people are eating these days. Um, and the other one's like the um, Asian salad that you've already, you know, pre uh, pre-bought for um, the night before. And you're making a decision between the two. It's like, no, I've made the decision. I've bought the food. I've pre-chopped up the food. It's already there. The decision's really easy. That, so there's no fork in the road. It's just a, um, a bit of a giveaway sign. And you just keep rolling through towards the dinner that you actually should be eating. So it just takes, the, it takes so much more mental energy. It takes so much more... Um, it's no decision that has to be made really. And all you have to do, like I said, is just take the next step forward. So it's pre-making those decisions. It's, it's already knowing what you're going to be doing for your training. It's already knowing when you're going to train, what day you're going to train and what time you're going to train. You just get up. It's like, I, you don't I go, should I get up or shouldn't I get up? As soon as you ask yourself the question, should I wake up? And it's like 5 a.m. or it's 4 a.m. or 6 a.m. or whatever it is. And as soon as you say, should I get up or should I lay in bed? If you're asking yourself the deci to a decision, you've just lost, right? It's not a decision. If you said you were going to do it, that's what you do. You get up and you just get moving. Because as Jay said, you know, when we look at it, like we... We just need to commit at the head, at before the time. If not, we're going to be failing. Um, so we pre-make our decisions and we also don't want to make it too hard, too early or too boring. I think that's a big thing. If you, all you did every single day, you've got, okay, and I've done a small off squat program before. It's like pretty much squatting every single day of the week. Now it's fucking hard to wake up every morning at 4 a.m. knowing you're going to have to squat every single day and your joints are sore and all the rest of it. It's hard to stay motivated or disciplined um, to eat chicken and broccoli every single meal of the day, right? If, you, if your shit's boring and bland, 
and like you're just not going to want to keep following through. So I think this is where making it not too hard comes into play. So you want to have a program with a bit of variety. It's not too hard, but it's just harder than what you're doing at the moment. You just want to somewhat look forward to it. And I think I've talked in the past um, with myself, if I you know, lift, miss out on doing weights for a little bit. Um, I sort of come back into a bit more of a bodybuilding routine, even though it's not my favorite style of training, but it's the least taxing mentally for me to do. And I can just throw some weights around. And then as I get back into the rhythm and routine of training, then I'll add in some hit sessions in there and I'll start doing some of the stuff that I truly love, but I really hate love. I, I hate, hate doing it at the start. So it's like this love hate relationship. So it's the same with our dinners. If we can understand and you know go to the Fit Dad Instagram and look at some of Jason's recipes, and we can go, oh wow, I can actually hit my calories and I can eat foods that I pretty much I enjoy most of the time, then all of a sudden it's not too hard too early, and then what we we start to gain momentum. And once we gain momentum, the discipline to keep going is much easier. It's it takes. I was saying to one of my guys yesterday, you know. It takes more energy or so much more energy to get something started than to keep it going, right? Uh, so I think if you look at it, it's like we use, what's the uh, analogy with the um, a rocket leaving the earth? I think it's 80% of the fuel is to leave the earth's atmosphere and then 20% to get around orbit the moon. Is that what it is, yeah. Jace? Something like that. So, yeah, it takes like 80 to 90% just to get out of the gravitational pull of earth. So it's the same as you. It's like it takes 80 to 90% of your energy, I would say in the first 30 days of a transformation because you've got so many bad habits, so many things you're trying to stop. And then so, and you know, you've got environmental changes you have to make. You've got friendship changes you have to make. There's people that around you that aren't making it easy. And all of a sudden you've had those conversations over that first month. Oh, I'm doing dry May. Oh, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm following the training. Oh, I'm going to run on Saturday morning so I can't go out drinking. Um, oh, I don't want to go out drinking. Um, so you, you've got so much pull in the first 30 days and you once you stick to it, and you get through that first 30 days, and if you're actually disciplined for 30 days, then it takes like 20% of the energy to keep going. And I think that is what you have to understand. And that's when like discipline is the hardest at the start. And I think if you go into something, knowing discipline is the hardest at the start, I need to make it easy enough to gain momentum to make me feel like I'm winning both on the scale or the centimeters plus in the actual uh, process that I'm trying to undertake. That means you're going to gain that momentum and then it takes 20% to keep you going. I think that is something that we all have to understand as well. Yeah, 100%. You want to reduce as much friction as possible in those early days and you want to give as much attention to it as possible. Don't go into it thinking it's going to be easy and thinking that it's going to be and every, all the stars are going to align and your kids aren't going to get sick and you're not going to get fucking COVID or whatever. Like, Don't go into it thinking those things. You've got to go into it with a rock solid plan and uh, and above all else, making sure you have that, that faith up there as well. And the second, uh, I guess the final thing on this one that we want to talk about is, is in terms of building momentum and building up that, um, that continued motivation and continued discipline comes from tracking your wins and, and having a bit of a tally and going, all right, uh, and we've talked about this many times before, if you ever miss, you just never miss twice. And you just have that ingrained in your um, in your plan. And every single win streak you get, you want to try and beat your previous win streak. Your streak could be just tracking steps, tracking food, tracking weight. Um, it could be hitting you know three sessions a week, tracking your food, tracking your steps, whatever. Those three are probably really good ones for you to follow. But have a win streak where you are doing the shit that you need to do daily and physically like ticking it off, like gamify it for yourself. And there's like habit apps and stuff like that where you can really gamify it and tick it off and and like you know yeah you fucking did your thing for today. But there's something that's really visceral around like crossing something off a list and ticking a box so having those things whether it's like a whiteboard that you erase and you you know write it in in the morning and you cross it off as you achieve it but you have a win streak of something that you're tracking it could just be as simple for you as hitting five to six thousand steps a day as you're getting started it could just be tracking your food and hitting your protein target like that might be your your baseline and that's okay but whatever it is that builds momentum momentum builds good vibes and that builds results so make sure that whatever you do track it try and create a win streak out of it try and do it as many times in a row as many days in a row as you can and then if you ever have a day where you fall off you never miss twice you get back on the next day and your goal is to beat your previous win streak and then you've got 
it's not necessarily I've got to do this now for the rest of my life. It's how long can I go? I've now just, I've got a goal to set. It's like when you're going in, it's like, cool, last week I did eight reps. Now I want to do nine reps. Well, last week I did a hundred kilos. Now I want to do 105 kilos. Like you've got little goals that you want to work towards. And it's not like I've got to do this into the infinite void of chicken breast and broccoli, right? That's not, we want it to be a bit better than that, but you're not infinitely projecting it forward you're just going cool what is my next win streak let's see how long i can keep this going for these are my goals you started to focus in on the daily as opposed to the big long journey of everything that's going on and it becomes a little bit easier to focus on and a little bit easier just to kind of keep that momentum going exactly and as you always say it's like you live by default or you live by design i think you know with this it's it's pre-making the decisions which is making sure we're living by design it's creating this win streak and having rules around your win streak was living which is living by design and then all of a sudden if you keep living by this design you'll wake up one day and you'll have the belief that you want you have the body that you want and then the health that you want as well um so i think it's understanding these little simple differences between motivation and and discipline and understanding that you know, the average person waits for motivation to come. The athlete essentially, you know, just does it no matter what, whether they feel like it or not. And I want us to all think of ourselves as athletes. You are the everyday dad athlete out there. Um, and if you don't think of yourself at that at the moment, maybe that's the identity you want to move towards. Because, you know, if we think about an, ad- uh, an athlete, what do they do? Well, they look fit. They're physically fit. They can run. They can, they're strong. They can keep up, um, you know, with other athletes, which means you can keep up with your kids. Um, you know, they um, feel good, you know, generally, you know, nine times out of 10 with athletes, they feel good and look good. Um, so, you know, if we want to be the, the identity of the athlete, then maybe we start living like the athlete and the athlete just simply gets the job done when it takes training. So the, the next question we want to uncover today is like, do you actually have to track nutrition? Uh, I think, yes, there's a, it's a yes and no answer, um, for this. I think, you know, I do believe that what you don't measure, you can't manage. Um, to get initial results, do you have to track your nutrition? No. Do you want long-term results? I believe until you get the result, then yes, you should track your nutrition. Once you achieve your result and you've got your goal, do you have to keep tracking nutrition? No, probably you don't. So it's like, it all depends on the context of the person on where they're at the journey and where they're at with their life as well. So Jace, do you want to delve into what you think about this? Yeah, I think when it comes to when it comes to tracking your nutrition, it's not like you, exactly as you said, like it's not necessarily the most important thing initially like tracking every single detail, but this is what I say to my guys. If you are going to track your nutrition, do it with intention. The purpose of tracking your nutrition isn't just to track your food and hit your calories mindlessly, it's to educate you about food. And this mm. is the most important factor when it comes to tracking is like if you don't and this, I, I've told guys this heaps of times. There's plenty of guys who will go through and they'll just go through the motions. This food hits, this food doesn't, this portion, okay, cool, done. There are, but then there are guys who go to me like, holy shit, I didn't realize how many calories were in beef sausages or I didn't realize how much my drinks were affecting me. Um, and I didn't realize how much this was happening and this was happening in effect. And as a result, they start to go, oh, fuck, I'm just going to trade this for this. And that makes so much more sense. And now what they're doing is they're creating habits and patterns and recognition in their head of, oh, I know that looks innocent. Like one of my guys is like, fuck, I tracked pork belly and it went over, it went, blew out my calories. I'm like, all right, that seems like it would be obvious for for me and for some people. But if you've never tracked food before and you don't understand calorie density, this is the most valuable education that you can ever do for yourself is tracking food, understanding its calorie load for how much you get of it and go, oh, well, for this amount of pork belly, I could have like a fucking pork chop twice the size and have way more protein, way less fat and still enjoy it. It's like, oh yeah, pork belly is fucking delicious and crackly and crispy and chewy, gummy, fucking fatty. Yeah, it's all of those things. There's a reason why it has a lot of calories and it tastes so good, right? The two things kind of go hand in hand. But that education and that understanding is probably the most important thing for you to not only get results in the short term, but keep them in the long term and be able to maintain them. I have not trained for the last uh, probably four weeks in, and probably won't be training again for the next you know, week or so um, in any kind of meaningful capacity. I went for like a 1K run with Imi in the pram yesterday because she, it was either cuddle daddy and I have to carry her around holding her, which is not great for my back, or it's run, 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 run. So I went for a run, run, run because it was a lot easier. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, to be honest, it was fine. So anything outside of that, I'm not going to be doing. I haven't also been tracking, I've been doing this for myself. I haven't been tracking my food for the last like two weeks. I'm the exact same weight. 
um, I was 74.5 this morning. And I've had times where I've had like, you know, it was Mother's Day and you know, cookies. I haven't been tracking my food. But because I've been eating the same way and tracking my food for such a long time, I know roughly how much is in the stuff that I'm eating. And as a result, I'm probably actually eating better because I'm eating bigger meals and I'm snacking a little bit less because I'm not worrying about like tracking it or whatever. I'm just like, all right, I'll just have what I feel like. All right, I'm hungry. I'm going to have a meal rather than me just like, oh, I've got to graze until it's meal time because I only have this many calories for my dinner or whatever. But because of that education, I've now gone two weeks with no training, fuck all steps, probably less than 3,000 steps a day for the last couple of weeks. And then now it's kind of getting up to about five, 6,000 steps a day. And I haven't put on any weight, right? Most guys in this position would go backwards, right? Plenty of guys would, but because I've tracked my food and I've educated myself on it, I've not gone backwards. And if you don't track your food and you don't have, bring that awareness to your food, you can't manage it, you can't change it, um, and you can't make better decisions. So there's only so far, and this we get the guys all the time, there's only so far that just eating healthy will get you. And oh, I, I eat pretty well. Like that's, that's, that's the problem for most guys is they eat well, but they don't, they don't know shit about their portion size. So once you get your portion size under control and, and basically what I do is I focus on, is there a source of protein and is there a source of veg or, um, or, uh, like fruit at this meal, depending on what I'm having. If there is awesome. That's like, that's all I really need to focus on personally. Um, because I've tracked for so long and then it's just starting to learn how to pay attention to your hunger cues, but you, your hunger cues are kind of skewed initially. And it's, it is something that tracking is always something that I will sort of come back to, to realign myself and to like kind of keep myself in check um, when it comes to my food, because the, you can, your hunger levels can deceive you and they can easily start to blow out if you start to choose shit of food. You, like I've told this to every guy who's been on a shred and gotten used to those shred calories and then they go on a bit of a, a bulk plan and they're like, oh, this is so much food, I'm getting so full, but after two weeks it becomes fine and they can fit it in. And then you put a little bit more food in, then it becomes fine, a little bit more food in, then it becomes fine. And it slowly ratchets its, ratchets its way up. So if you have zero knowledge, zero understanding, tracking food is 100% your best friend. Yeah, mate, because I, I think even if you're going to lunch, oh, sorry, for breakfast or brunch with your partner and you know, you're like, oh, I want to eat healthy, you look at the acai bowl um, versus you know the bacon and eggs. It might be I bacon, some scrambled eggs and two pieces of sourdough toast. And you're like, oh, the acai bowl is better. And in reality, it's probably somewhere between 750 to 900 calories, right? Depending you on know, how much might, fucking honey, almond, uh, granola yeah. they put on top. <laughs> Exactly. So it could even be more. So, but if you look at the the eggs and a couple of slices of like eye bacon and two pieces of toast, you're probably looking at like 550, 600 calories. So if you're not having a full English breakfast, but if you're looking at it, you go, well, I could have one is disappointing as well. I'm going to be healthy, have the acai bowl and it tastes like you're drinking, you're eating like kid food, like a baby food. Um, and you're like, well, I'd rather just have the bacon and eggs and you should because it's better for you as far as calories and weight loss and also your protein content. So your lean fat loss as well and holding muscle mass. So It'll keep you without the edge, a hundred percent because the protein count, right? So it keeps you satiated for longer. So I think if we look at it, it's going, well, you know, if I have more education around things, then I can make better choices for me so I can eat the things I love rather than feel like I'm going on some health food diet that I hate as well, which generally speaking, a lot of the times isn't lowering calories. A snack in the afternoon, you might have gone past the health food store and you've got those protein balls. Those protein balls are 200 calories, 300 calories, 400 calories because they have dates and peanut butter or almond butter in them and they have some crappy protein powder and it's all pushed together. Um, or you could like just get a Mars bar. Like if you're trying to get some, if you're trying to do it because this is a, a guilt-free treat, it's got more calories than a Mars bar. Just eat the Mars bar if you want the Mars bar and fit that inside the calories. So what happens is the discipline in tracking is what I like. The discipline in tracking gives you the freedom in health in food choices. I think that's what it is. When we look at discipline equals freedom. The discipline in food tracking gives you the freedom in food choices. If not, you know, like I said, you know, if, if you couldn't track and I was looking to, to like, you know, you're on, say you're going away, like I, I talked about a couple of weeks ago on the podcast when my client was going away um, for a week and he didn't really have much control over his foods. Uh, I just I said, mate, go for a low carb diet, except to have a portion of carbohydrates with dinner. It's like breakfast, make sure it's protein. So it's like, have a, have a three egg omelet. Okay. That's your breakfast. Have lunch. You're going towards salads or a wrap. 
and heavy on the protein, not on the uh, sauces. So no sauce, you're having, you know, salads and chicken and a wrap or just have a protein and salad. Um, afternoon, have a shake and dinner time, have a palm of, uh, of protein, have, you know, two p- fistful of vegetables and have like a, a cupped handful of carbohydrates. And you know, that will probably be somewhere around the some between 1500 to 1800 calories. So you know, if we can't track, I'd go to a carbs with dinner and protein for lunch and breakfast and with a protein based snack. And like, but it's really boring. Like that's what you have to do. If you're not tracking, you have to be boring. If you're tracking, you get to be creative. And I think a lot of people fall off diets because they're, oh, it's so boring. It's not sustainable. It's like, exactly. This is the exact point of why you need to track because if not, it is boring. It is unsustainable. But if you have the education, as Jace was saying before, from tracking and have the awareness that you can have bacon and eggs um, or you can have a Mars bar if you want one or two beers, it's only you know, 250, 300 calories. And you're like, wow, I can stay on my diet. And it gives us this freedom and belief, this power of um, agency that yes, I can control what I eat because I know what I can fit in that I love. And I know what I can fit in, what I need to have to hit my protein goals, hit my calorie needs. So um, it's, it's so many different ways um, why you need to track uh, because it's empowering. I think that is the biggest thing. It's an empowering thing to do for the longevity of your life and your health. Um, and tracking to goal is the easiest way because if you're eating clean and you, you hit a plateau, because it's always inevitable, you're always going to hit plateaus. You can't eat cleaner. You, you, it's, there's no such thing, right? Or soap. There is no, yeah, or soap, yeah. It's like there's no, there's no such thing as eating cleaner. So you've gone low carb, or you've gone keto, you've hit a plateau. What do you do? More keto? Like go keto harder? You're like, like it's not a thing. So like when we're tracking Inject our calories, more you know, fat into my veins. <laughs> exactly. I know. I need more fat. Um, it's, it's not the lack of fat that's stopping you. It's you've just hit a calorie maintenance because your metabolism will slow down over time because you're a smaller version of you. So it means you need to eat less, which is the amount of calories you eat. It's just based on science. So if you hit a plateau and you're tracking your calories, and you're eating like 2000 calories a day. It's like, okay, well, see, clearly we've hit a maintenance. And now we need to de- increase the deficit again. You can increase the deficit by movement because you're tracking your steps. So you go, oh, I could go up by a thousand steps a day, or I can go down by 200 calories a day, or I could add in a, a, a cardio session. But because what we, what we measure, we get to manage, and that gives us the ability to go, I've hit a plateau, and I'll move past this plateau within the next week because I know I can manipulate my energy output and energy input because I track it, which gives me the belief, agency, and certainty that I can keep moving through plateaus because they're only ever going to stop me for a week, and that's the most. And I think that is probably one of the most empowering things in it. Yeah, 100%. It is all about empowerment and being able to make the decisions for yourself. And then when you're choosing food, you can choose food you are making the choice as opposed to just being sort of shoehorned into a diet by default that you just have to eat because that's the food that is allowed and that you're said to eat and it breaks up a lot of those stigmas around certain foods if you're like oh i know i ate a good food or i ate a bad food or i had this i know it wasn't great and i'm like hang on you ate this you tracked your calories you hit your calories you hit your protein i don't give a fuck what else you ate from a fat loss perspective that is all that matters When it comes to your overall health, yeah, if you were to fit in two glasses of wine a night, probably not the best for your health overall, as much as people are like, oh, fucking antioxidants or whatever. It's like, oh, it's basically just grapes. It's a serve of fruit. Get out. Um, (laughs) But that like that mentality of I can have this, I'm allowed to have this, I can fit it in if I want to. It just requires a trade-off. But if I fit it in and I hit my protein and I hit my calories, it takes away the stigma of good food and bad food because that's there's too much of that discourse going online these days of this is good and this is bad. Tracking food gives you the power to say, what am I choosing to have? Am I choosing to hit my goal and am I choosing to move myself forward or am I choosing to indulge or have this or whatever? And I understand the impact and the amount of guys that have also gone, oh, I had this. I didn't realize that I went over by, you know, 300 calories on my goal. I'm like, cool. Now we can adjust for tomorrow, bring it down by 300 calories or bring it down by 150 calories the next two days. And you're, you're exact, perfectly back on track. Even so, 300 calories over when you need to lose 7,700 worth of cal- um, calories to lose a kilo of fat. 300 calories, does, it's not a fucking lot, right? Here and there, it's like, you know, every day, it's obviously a bit of a difference. It ends up being about a third of a kilo that you end up losing less of. But that's not bad. That's not a huge trade-off. And then it, it starts to, because a lot of people have fear around food and they're just like, they just, oh, I don't understand. It. And there's all this stuff going on. It's like, no, once you start to understand the numbers and you actually start to track it and empower yourself, you can go, 
cool. I had one big night. It's not going to fucking throw me off because too many of you guys out there are all or nothing. It's like, if I can't do it perfectly, I'm not going to do it at all. No, you've got the numbers. You can adjust. It's like, oh, if I didn't make as much money as I wanted to make in my very first job, then I might as well just quit and never earn any money again. It's like, no, don't be fucking stupid, right? You know, you can work your way up and you can adapt and you can get better. Like it's no issue with it. So tracking your food, tracking your nutrition, it's not a necessity, but it definitely, it gives you the most agency in whatever way you choose to do it. Exactly. And I think the last thing we wanted to discuss today was your lack of belief in yourself is holding you back. And I think a lot of us literally don't believe that we can lose weight. We have so many stories built out over so long. It's like, you know, whether you're too old, you're too tired, you're too busy, um, you're too broken, you're too fat, your metabolism's too slow, your testosterone's too low. Whatever it is, we want to find the reasons that help us justify why we're being overweight which allows us to have no belief or a low self-belief that we can change and when we have a a low self-belief or no self-belief then we move into helplessness which is like what's the point and we just sit still and we continue to gain weight and we continue to travel down the trajectory that we're on which is gaining more weight and more weight and then we get diabetes and we have heart disease and we die early Um, because it is a slippery slope for a lot of people out there or you can understand that everything's changeable everything and just if you're fit right now you can be fat and just if you're fat right now you can be fit everything is changeable all the good and all the bad and self-belief you you can't kind of wake up and go you get if you're 30 kilos of weight you're not going to have this overwhelming self-belief that you're going to have abs and i think that's a big thing that me and jace have talked about on and off the podcast right i ask him like how many of these guys when i get abs and jace's like oh i don't know some say yes some say no and i i i always am the one that presses not just with jace but i press with everyone i was like i did a post around on my facebook right like um about like if i could give you abs with the snap of a finger um would you want them and every guy would say yes right the problem is a lot of guys, one, don't believe they can get abs. Everyone has abs at the end of the day. They just have like a more fat covering them than others. So everyone literally has an abdominal structure. You cannot stand upright without it or stay upright. Um, so we all have abs. We just have different levels of layers of fat over the top of them. So if you want to have visible abs as far as some form of aesthetic goal, um, and yes, it's achievable. So yes, you can get it. But it's the belief that you have the discipline or the ability. A lot of people don't believe they have the ability to get abs because they've always they've been overweight or never had them or been overweight their whole life. Or it's too long since they've seen those abs. So their ability to believe that at 40 or at 50 or at 60, they can change and get them again. Yet time and time again, I see our guys, um, you know, doing the unbelievable, doing the impossible, right? Like, you know, the four minute mile wasn't broken, right? Until it was broken. The guy who's 30, 40, 50 kilos overweight and he's in his fifties, um, who didn't believe he gets abs, gets abs. And all of a sudden other people believe it because he did it as well. So guys, you know, if it's, if it can be done, then it can be done by you. And when I'm talking about abs, you know, maybe not everyone's going to be an astronaut, but everyone can definitely get some abs. So, it's, it's understanding, can it be done? And if it's a yes, if someone else has done it, then you can do it as well. But our belief comes over time, right? You're not going to wake up and have this unwavering, strong belief that you are going to have like on point decisions for the next, you know, 26 weeks straight, which will get your abs. It's like, no, it's like understanding that the self-belief is built daily and it's built daily by doing the thing, right? That's how self-belief is made. It's by actually doing the work because you do the work and you're like, ah, just like me, you know, getting in my nutrition, just like me waking up on time, just like me. Like, this is what I say to myself, right? And, we, and you know, when I do the right thing, I, I talk to myself like, just like me, like the type of guy that gets up in the morning and just like me, the guy, type of guy that does the mobility now, um, just like me, the guy who, who gets his training in no matter what. So the more we do it, and the more positive self-talk, like I was just saying, then it happens, then that's how our, our belief builds. And if you say you're going to do it, and the more you don't do it, the more your self-belief diminishes and self-doubt increases. And then you will start believing even more that you can't get the abs and you can't change your body and you can't change your life. So self-belief is literally built one moment and one day and one week at a time. And I think 
we, we, we lack the understanding. We think it's like a black or white thing, but there is so many shades of gray in building self-belief that, that it's built over 90 days, 180 days, um, 365 days. hundred mm, percent. It's, it's an ever growing process. Like you never, it's not just, you wake up and all of a sudden you believe in yourself completely. Um, but as Trav said, you've got to work at it over time. You've got to stoke the flame, so to speak. You've got to, you know, continue to see and this is why i talk about i talked about before looking for evidence of you having done hard shit or shit you haven't wanted to do in the past and applying that same mentality if there's ever been anything that you've not wanted to do but you've done it anyway going into work when you're fucking tired or hung over or whatever it might have been like you've done that shit before it's and people will always look at themselves and they go oh but i can't do that or whatever it's like well you're just looking at one aspect of your life where you haven't applied the same skills and the same motivation and the same fucking grit and determination that you've applied to other areas of life. Half of these guys are like, you're working fucking 12 hour days. You're putting in overtime. I was chatting to one of my guys who um, was basically doing almost like voluntary overtime for his work because it just had to be done. He had to do um, calls in the morning and then there was another team that was on, lo- on board later at night. So he was doing calls with them. I'm like, cool. So that means that you, however long you're doing these calls for, you, you're on salary, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, cool. You've got an hour and a half or however long it takes in the day for you that's your time you can take that time because you've, you've got necessary shit in the morning necessary shit in the evening so you've got time for yourself that you can block out he's like oh yeah yeah i guess so but a lot of guys will just put that fucking effort into work instead of putting that effort into themselves it's like no you have been fucking determined you have had grit you have done hard shit you've been working fucking laborious jobs like and you've been putting shit on the line you've been making it happen you have that mentality. You've just been applying it in different areas. You've been applying it and doing mm. different things, right? You've gotten up and done the fucking nappy changes, hopefully, and, and the bottle feeds, and you haven't, you haven't thrown your kid out the window, so you had, you, you had your self-restraint there. Um, you, you, you've done all of this good stuff. You are still that fucking person. You've just got to apply it mm. into this area. Right. And realize that you are still the same person, regardless of what that area is that you apply it. So it's, it's, it's not telling yourself the stories of all the times you've tried and you failed. It's about all the times when you've tried in other areas and you succeed. And it's like, well, I need to take that level of intensity and effort into this. The problem is most people don't, they just see this is all oh, this convenient thing that I should just be able to kind of eat a little bit different. I should just eat apples and chicken breast and then it should just fall off. The weight should just fall off and it should be easy. No, it's going to take some grit and determination. It's going to take the level of effort that you put into your work, that you put into your family for that area to change. But it will change if you put that area, if that level of effort in and knowing that it will change if you do that. And you've got to have, I think belief in the process is a big one. A lot of guys mm. don't have that belief in the process. Um, they, they don't believe that the thing, oh, this I've tried this and it doesn't work for me. Um, or I've tried that and it doesn't work for me. It's like, all right, well, we need to find the plan that does work for you because there is a plan for everyone that will work. It just requires those little changes. And the second part of, of making sure that you're not being held back, obviously there's your stories, your mental stories, but there's also your circle and the people you surround yourself with. And those people, your environment, they can either boost you up or they can hold you back. They can be the guys that say, yeah, good on you. Like, we're not going to offer you beers. We're not going to offer you drinks because we know you're, you're on the path. Like, good on you, go smash it. And then there's the guys saying, oh, don't be a little bitch. Come have a beer or come have a drink or whatever. There's that circle of people will drag you down and will wear at you eventually. It's even the people within your family who are like, oh, you know, our family, we're just big boned because they don't want to see anyone break that mold because if everyone's overweight, then everyone's more comfortable. Everyone is not as, they don't feel like, oh, now you've lost weight. I feel bad about myself because now I have to do it too. Um, Mm -hmm. Or you're doing this because, you know, to prove a point to me or whatever, there's all the family shit that goes into it. And even sometimes your, your partner, your partner might be someone who wants you to, wants the best for you. But by doing so, what they do is they discourage you from your goals because they don't want to see you try and fail and get upset with yourself. And that's and they've maybe seen that a couple of times before and they, that's what they try and do. So you've got to be fucking rock solid at your goals. And you've got to know who is on the bus with you and who is helping you on this journey and who are the people that are not. And you've got to have those frank conversations. You can say to yourself, look, I know I've done this a couple of times before. I want this to be the time that is a real change and I need you to be on board with me for it because it's going to be a lot harder if you're saying, oh, babe, just don't worry about it. It's okay. It's too hard. It's too much. You're fine. You've had a rough day. Have the pizza, have the beer, whatever. Have the ice cream. It's a cool, like you don't want that in your corner. You want the wife and the partner that's going to challenge you and help make sure that you stick to your goals. And having that public accountability is a big one, but you've got to audit your circle and audit the people around you to make sure that they are contributing to your journey and helping lifting you up as well. I agree, mate. And I think there's, there's times in your life that 
reminds you that you have been disciplined, whether it be in fitness or, or you have achieved in the past, that if you can lean on those for your current self-belief, they allow you to keep pushing forward. Because, you know, if I look at like this weekend, you know, for the half marathon, yeah, it hurts to walk at the moment. And if it hurts to walk on Sunday morning, I know that I ran 55 kilometers Spartan Ultra last January or February with a fractured foot, right? So a bit of sciatica for half for 21 Ks, like it doesn't bother me. I know before that I've run a, a marathon without training with a day's notice, right? Like I've done hard things. So I've done hard things in the past and uncomfortable things. And as I like, the, again, we've talked in the difference before about, I, I don't do, it's not dumb things, it's hard things. Like me running with a bit of sciatica, it's just a bit of pain. It's not going to break my back. But, um, you know, a stress fracture in my foot or having, like, it's not going to break my foot. It just means it will be more painful. But if I say I'm going to do something, I have this, so many reference points in my life that's like, mate, you've done hard stuff in the past. So I have a unwavering self-belief. It's like, it's not it's not hard for me to do the hard thing because I have so many hard things I've done and I lean on those and it's like, this is the type of person you are. So you just get up and you do it. So it's that, it's that level of self-belief that you've built up mentally and I can do that with health and fitness. You know, you can do that. It's like, you've done hard things in the past. So it's like, yes, I can do it. I can be uncomfortable. I can do hard things. This is just another hard thing. And because I've done hard things, I can do this hard thing. And I think that's what, what we need to lean to when we're looking for gaining and building our self-belief as well. Again, it's just one notch at a time. It's like, it's making sure we're, we're letting go at one excuse at a time as well. So every time we let go of an excuse, you know, we, we you know, give ourselves this extra, um, you know, badge of responsibility as like accountability and like we can keep moving forward, right? And our identity builds and builds towards that fit dad version of us. Every time we let go of an excuse, I'm too hard, I'm too old, I'm, I'm too broke, I'm too this, I'm too that. Like they're all excuses. But every time we let one of them go, it's like one less sort of ball and chain holding us back. We get to move forward that little bit easier because we don't have to hold on to it any longer. I think that is a, a big thing that we all have to understand. We have to understand that, you know, to change our life, we must change our life. So we can't have those excuses that we've held on to in the past if we want a different future. So we need to leave the past in the past and take right now and make our decisions today based on the information and the facts that we have today. And that is, it's a new fucking day and you get to put your hand to your mouth. And if you want to learn exactly what you should be putting inside your mouth, you need to go to fit-dad.club and we can have a call and tell you how many calories you need to eat and what you should be doing for your training. So then your self-belief even further increases because every single week you'll lose 1% of your body weight, your total body weight. If you're 100 kilos, start losing a kilo a week. You're like, fuck yes, I can do this because that's all it comes from. It's like, a, it's like yes, I can fucking do it because I can see it going down. And our guys have said time and time again, like I'm eating so much food because they're all of a sudden eating you know, a more um, nutrient-dense food rather than calorie-dense food. I'm eating enjoyable food. I'm, I don't have to train as much as I did in the past. I don't have to do hours and hours of cardio. Like 28 minutes a day, just 2% of my day is just enough for me to get the metabolism I need lift and the, the muscle to build like they say all these great things because all of a sudden they've been educated they've been educated around what they need to do instead of all the fucking bullshit that's out on the internet telling that you have to you know stand on one leg only eat fucking asparagus or the man shake and you have to blink three times and weight loss will occur like it's, it's like no hocus pocus it's just science and facts and i think that in itself gives people an understanding that it's, it's no guesswork to achieve your goal. It's straightforward facts that help you achieve your goal. Mm, 100%. You just, you've got to look at the evidence and you've got to look at what is actually happening for you and what are the actual things and the actual steps you need to take in order to get the result. What are the steps you have taken in the past that haven't worked for you? And I think the biggest thing for me is just being real with yourself and just being completely honest and going, where, like, <clears throat> they're like, 
when I think back to my journey, big thing for me, the big four goal, as I've said before, is repairing and healing my lower back and my hips and getting that movement and mobility back above and beyond everything else. I said that was my goal last time and then I got distracted and I got, uh, oh, but it sounds like fun to train for this high rocks and, and my running and all this kind of stuff and with all the volume I was doing of that. Conveniently, all of my mobility work and all of my stretching, all the boring stuff, right? The one that's not as fun, um, although burpee broad jumps are not fun, let me tell you. Um, but all the stuff that's not like, doesn't really fucking smash you, that started to take priority over the quote unquote boring stuff that I said was my priority, but then it wasn't my priority. And then guess what? Life threw me a fucking curveball again and, and getting up off the toilet going and then on the bed for three days and not being able to help my wife, not being able to pick up my daughter, um, all of that stuff that actually really mattered for me. So no excuses, but just a real reality check for me to go, I said this was my priority. I know that I didn't take the time to actually focus on it. So now this has got to be and will be and is promised to be my number one priority is getting the mobility back, getting the movement back, being able to move pain-free and also without fear of you know something just going for no reason, strengthening all those muscles and then looking at other things. But that has got to be my number one priority first. And it's like, I understand I made excuses, oh, but other stuff, oh, but this stuff will probably get it and it'll be all right. Oh yeah, I'm doing these squats so that I should strengthen everything up and, and be okay. And then just ignore the warning signs and ignore the the pattern. So we're not, you know, infallible. We all have our own things that we need to work on. Um, but a big thing is just being real with yourself, right? Being completely transparent and honest with yourself and saying, yeah, look, I didn't prioritize this enough. I got lazy with it. Like I, and I did the more convenient things or the easier things for me to do because it's a lot cooler to go do some fucking heavy dumbbell presses and, um, and, and do some like goblet squats with your heels elevated and smash your quads and feel really good. It's a lot easier to do that than it is to do some like body weight tibialis raises and some little knee bends and, um, holding a back extension for 30 seconds at a time. Um, because they're not really sexy and I'm not going to grow big arms from that. Right. Um, like it, it's, it's just not. As sexy, but it does over time accumulate to the actual goal that I want. So it's got to be the thing that I do, but I lost sight of that. So if you've lost sight of the reason why you're doing this and you lost sight of that bigger picture and that thing, as Trav said, book in, have a chat, go to fit-dad.club. We'll have a conversation about you and your plan. Maybe some of your excuses from the past, what you need, because it's equal parts, what you need to set and the goals you need to set and the shit you need to let go of. And all the stuff from the past, you just start with a fresh slate and say, cool, this is who I have been. We talk about the line in the sand. This is who I need to be now. This is who I have to be now to be the best man for my family. And it's going to look different for everyone, but you've got to set that goal. You've got to set that intention and you just need to stick to the fucking plan. And if you need to kick up the ass, we can give you a kick up the ass, but it's not like, oh, we're going to be there to motivate you and we'll push you. We've talked about this already. You've got to be disciplined. We'll give you the plan. We'll say, hey, what the fuck's going on? But you've got to be disciplined enough to action the plan and to actually do the shit that you say you want to do for the goal that you say that you want. Exactly. So guys, leave a review on the podcast today. If it's five stars, give us five stars. If it's comments, give comments. Let us know what you want in the podcast in the future. And we'll try and even break down the podcast like we did today with a couple of different questions. Um, Wish Jace a happy birthday, guys, because it is his birthday. And, um, you know, share this with a dad that you want. If you need some help, go to fit-dad.club and we'll be there for you. If not, we'll talk to you next Monday. And this is the Fit Dad Club. So thank you guys for listening in. Peace out.